for bringing us in this morning. Thank you for watching over us as we slept last night. Thank you for your grace you have upon our life. Thank you for being such a loving and forgiving God. Thank you for everything that you have done for us, Heavenly Father. But we know, Heavenly Father, without you, we are nothing. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We could never thank you enough for all that you have done. But we will continue to praise your holy name. We will continue to uplift you and give you all the praise, Heavenly Father. For you are worthy to be praised. There is none like you, Heavenly Father. We continue to thank you, Heavenly Father. For we know, we know that you have done so much for us. And we appreciate everything that you have done. Heavenly Father, we know, Heavenly Father, without you, we wouldn't be able to do anything. We wouldn't be able to walk, talk, or anything, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, it's you who wake us up in the morning and say, your, your work is not done. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name. We worship you, Heavenly Father. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over to us bringing us here this morning and keeping us safe, Heavenly Father. We ask that you, Heavenly Father, and the one who's on their way here, Heavenly Father, that you watch over them, guide and protect them and lead them here, Heavenly Father, safely, Heavenly Father. Our journey back home, Heavenly Father, we ask that you watch over us and let us get home safely, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you uplift us, Heavenly Father, in, in, in a prayer and keep a watch over us, Heavenly Father, and we go into this worship service this morning, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that it touches every one heart who's in here, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to guide and uplift each and every one of us, Heavenly Father. We worship you, Heavenly Father. We praise your holy name. There is none like you, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to watch over our children. Keep them safe, Heavenly Father. Away from all things that mean no good to them, Heavenly Father. Away from all idols, Heavenly Father. And keep them away from anything that is dangerous and, and not of your word, Heavenly Father. We ask that you to continue to praise them and continue to watch them, Heavenly Father. Guide them, Heavenly Father, for they need you, Heavenly Father. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to watch over our church, to uplift our, our spirits and our finances in all areas of our life, Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to praise us, Heavenly Father, for we are doing your work, Heavenly Father, and we need more people in our congregation, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bring more and more people into our church, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you uplift us in any way possible to get um, any finances that we need, Heavenly Father, to build a new church, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our pastor, Heavenly Father, for he's doing a marvelous job, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you touch his heart when he, try, when he deliver our message to us this morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that the, whoever's doing search the scripture this morning, Heavenly Father, that you touch their heart, Heavenly Father. Let them deliver their message the way that you want them, Heavenly Father, for they need you, Heavenly Father. We all need you, Heavenly Father. We will continue to praise your holy name, Heavenly Father, for there is none like you. There is none like you. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Father, him, I just want you to know that today is not just an ordinary Sunday service. And uh, it's not just, you, you didn't just come here by mistake or to fulfill all righteousness. But because God has ordained to, you to be here today. And he has something for you today. So in a few minutes, just tell God and say, that thing that you have for me today, even before the foundation of the earth, you knew I would be here. And you have created this day for a change in my life. Say, say God, that blessing, that message, word you have for me today, I will receive it before I leave here. Open your mouth and pray. Just talk to him. Don't close your mouth. Talk to the Lord. A closed mouth can be a closed heaven. And when you open your mouth and ask, it shall be given unto you. Speak the word and it will come to pass. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Let's open our hymn. GHS 151. S 
Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We give you the praise for whom you are, and there is none like unto you, there is none beside you. Father, we ask that you will breathe into your word, that our lives will, will be touched, that we will be able to understand all that you have for us in the search of the scripture for this morning. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. It's time for search the scripture. Are we all happy? I'm glad to be here this morning. <clears throat> Who can remind us of the last week topic? the act of giving, the act of acceptable giving. And I hope we are blessed, we are blessed with that message last week by our brother. And today we'll be looking at lesson 673. 673, sense spiritual warfare. Sense spiritual warfare. I know we've heard about warfare. We hear about warfare. The first I come to mind is war. Nobody wants to go to, to physical war. But when it comes to spiritual warfare, it is a must for every believer. It is a must for every Christian. Because why? There are so many afflictions. There are enemies of your soul. And they come in diverse ways trying to war against your soul. And when you are conscious of this, it's lesson 673. And when you are conscious of it, then you will be ready to war and to fight against the wise of the enemies. Let's read our memory verse together. At the count of three. One, two, three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty true God, the down of strongholds. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. Amen. Which is taken from Second Corinthians 10, from verse 1 to 6. The gem with me as, as we read it. The, now I, Paul, beseech you by the mercies and by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in present and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not cannon, but mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in our, in our readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. 
Praise the Lord. First, it's good for us to understand what is going on in this chapter, in this episode here written by Apostle Paul. In the church of Corinthian, there, there were some deceivers, some first members and some first preachers who sneaked into the church. Now, Apostle Paul, we know him as is a great man of God. When it comes to his intellectual, he's intelligent. When it comes to background, he's from a, from a reputable background. He's gifted, he has knowledge, he has everything. But whenever, but when it comes to the, to the church, when it comes to the church of Corinth, he humbled himself before the people. Then when he writes, then when he's away, when he writes to them, he writes with boldness. Whenever there is sin in the church, whenever there, there is misconduct among them, he always, he always address the issues without fear. He write them with, with boldness to, to address everything. Now we can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, where he wrote to the people, he said, I hear that there is adultery and fornication among you, as it is not found among the unbelievers. He addressed it with boldness, without fear. And these first believers who were among the church of Corinth, they became double-minded. And they said that when he's with us, he humbled himself. How come such a humble man can write to us with such a, a boldness? So how come such a meek man who humbled himself among us, who is so meek and gentle, but when he's away, he writes to us with such confident boldness and authority. Then they said that he must be carnal, that he must be acting according to, to the flesh. Then Apostle Paul, in this, in this chapter, he wrote back in response to those critics, those who were criticizing his humility. He told them that just as Christ was humble, that is the same way he is humble. That he is following the Christ-like attitude. That he is following the footstep of our Lord Jesus Christ, who humbled himself to the extent of washing the feet of the disciples. But when he got, when he came to the temple, and he discovered that his house has become a den of robbers and thieves. He did what? He addressed it. He cleaned up the house with authority. So Apostle Paul was, was responding that they shouldn't expect him to both work according to the flesh or to both in according to his fleshly desire, but according to the spirit. That when he's writing in boldness, he's fighting a spiritual warfare. That's why he said, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Because if you know that if we do not address those issues, the soul of of his convert, the soul of the people, they will go into damnation. That is why as believers, when, no matter how humble we are, no matter how meek we are, we shouldn't be meek to the extent that we will not be able to fight against falsehood. We shouldn't be meek to the extent that we will not be able to speak against misconduct in the house of God. 
even in our home and in our families. We shouldn't be so gentle and meek enough that we cannot correct, that we cannot instruct and put things aright. Because if we don't, then we are losing the spiritual battle. We are losing the soul of the people that we are supposed to save. And as we follow the full step of Christ, God will help us in Jesus' name. Portrait of a saintly warrior. We know that Satan is the father of sin. The Bible makes us to understand that he that committed sin is of the devil. And when we commit, when we are of the devil, that means we are not of God. There is no way we can be living in sin. We are of the devil and we claim to be of God. No. Let somebody read James chapter 4, verse 4. I think everything is captured in that scripture. James 4.4. 4. Hallelujah. James chapter 4 verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is an enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the God is the enemy of God. Amen. You see, there are those people who are enemy, enemy with, of God. He said, when you are a friend with the world, you are what? An enemy with God. And the, the Satan knows that sinners are enemies of God. And Satan used them as tools to fight against God's children, to fight against sound doctrine. He uses them to fight against God's plans for mankind. It's like sinners. When we are a sinner, we are living in sin. You are on probation. That God is giving you time to change and to repent. He's telling you, come into friendship with me. But in that state, when you are still living in sin, the love of God towards you at that time is unto repentance. Because God will not, God does not love you enough to keep you in, to keep you in sin. God does not love you enough to allow you to be in sin. Because you know that sin would destroy would destroy your life in hell. And that is why he said, come unto what? Unto repentance. And the devil knows that sinners are enemies with God, so he uses them as a tool to fight against mankind. As we can see in the case of, of Apostle Paul, the fake false prophet, they were the tools that the devil was trying to use to criticize him, to pull down his ministry of soul saving. They were the tool that the, that the devil was trying to, to, to use to, to criticize and to destroy his Christ-like attitude. But thank God he was wise enough and he reacted in the right way. And God will help us to be wise in Jesus' name. That the enemies will not instigate us to sin against God. You know how the agenda of the devil is just one. There is something that the devil is targeting in mankind and that is the soul of man. The devil is not, doesn't care about your finances. He doesn't care about your education. He doesn't care about what you have but he cares so much about your soul. And he can give anything and do anything to capture your soul.
And that is why when you start living a righteous life, when you start living a holy life, that is where the, the, the devil becomes scared. You might be going to church, the devil doesn't care. You might engage in any activities in the church, he doesn't care. But he is scared when you start living a holy life, when you start living the righteous life, when you become born again. That is when he knows that he has lost you. And he will not rest. Because he wants to get you back and, and, and that is why you have to stand to fight to resist him with the power that God has given unto you and he said when you resist the devil what will happen he will flee from you that is spiritual warfare Second Timothy chapter four, verse eight. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Did you know that the devil he knows the, the he knows the beauty of heaven he knows the promises awaiting believers on that day and he don't want you to achieve it and that is why you must put on the warrior's attitude you must put on the old armor of god that you might be able to fight the wires of the enemies. For you to be able to fight the wires of the enemies, you must be born again. That is the beginning. You must have Jesus Christ in your life. Because you need power to fight. If you are malnourished, no nourishment, no strength. How can you fight? You can't even fight. But when you are filled with the power of God, what happens? You can be able to do what? To fight. See, unless one is holy, he will always be on the losing side in spiritual warfare. You must live a holy life. You must be humble. That is what we say in the part. Says, now I myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. We see those attitudes in the life of Paul. Those attribute is very important in the life of a believer if you'll be able to fight spiritual warfare. You must be gentle, you must be meek. Put everything of the physical, subject it to the Spirit of God, that your, both, that your boldness and your boasting sh should be in Christ. There should be no bitterness among us. And as we do so, we'll be able to fight against the falsehood, the false prophets and the demons that, that are out there to destroy your soul and to take you away from the righteous parts and God will help us in Jesus name it is very important for believers to have a meek and gentle spirit it 
it is very, very important. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Now we'll look at why it is very important for us as believers to have a meek and gentle spirit. All scripture is given by inspiration and it's profitable for doctrine, good, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We know exhortation is very, very easy to accept. It's a general thing to accept. But when it comes to reproof, not everybody accepts reproof. It takes a meek and gentle spirit to be able to accept reproof and correction that comes from the word of God. It takes a meek and gentle spirit, a humble spirit, to accept correction and reproof. So that is one, it is important for us to have a meek and gentle spirit. God, it's helped us to submit to the word of God unreservedly. No, it helps us to accept the word of God. And also, it is valuable before God. God value it. It is acceptable before God. And when you are humble and gentle, it helps you to fellowship with your brethren. It helps you not, not to look at the physical level, but also looking at the spiritual aspect. Looking at them from the eyes of God. It helps you to be humble and help you to fellowship with the brethren. A humble and gentle spirit helps you to be considerate of others. And they are powerful agents for the restoration of faulty and and are haughty. And there are those people you know, who became faulty and they fall off the faith. You will be able to go and bring them back to the faith. And it is essential for fighting spiritual battle. And when you are humble, when you are meek and gentle, he shows the level of wisdom that you have. It is an evidence that you have wisdom. Let's see that in James chapter 3. James chapter 3. I read from verse 13. Are we all there? I read 13 and 17. Say, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conviction his work with meekness of wisdom. But the wisdom that is but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Then peaceable, gentle, and easy to entreat, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrites. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. We we'll see it is an evidence to show that you have divine wisdom. 
But when you are not meek, when you are not gentle, it shows that you don't have divine wisdom. And divine wisdom supersedes every earthly wisdom. And God will help us in Jesus' name. And they are also the fruits of the Spirit. Meekness and gentleness is part of the fruit of the Spirit. There is no way you can have one and you don't have the other. They go together. Just they go with the, with the whole fruits of the spirit. Amen. The lifestyle of a saintly warrior. Now you know as, as believers, you are warrior. You are the soldiers of Christ. We are to defend the word of truth and to secure the souls in God's kingdom. Just like the soldiers, they secure the borders, they, sec they secure the, co the country. They don't, they don't want the enemies to, co to come in and destroy lives. The same thing, we are spiritual soldiers of Christ, soldiers of Christ. Our warfare is not physical, but, but spiritual. We are to protect and to keep the souls in God's kingdom. When we have converts, we are to make sure that we retain them in, in, in Christ, in God's kingdom. You make sure that no false prophets come in and steal them away from you. You make sure that no form of discouragement comes in to discourage them and deceive them and lure them back to sin. Because you know that your soul is very, very important. And as we wake up to our responsibility as soldiers of Christ, our crown will be great on that day in Jesus' name. We know that the devil is trickish. He has his skin in which he, he uses. And when you are fighting on the side of God, you shouldn't be on the side of the devil. And when you understand the scheme of the, of the devil, when you understand his trick, his tactics, he will not get you. And that is why as believers, we should not be ignorance of Satan's devices. Let's read First John chapter three. First John chapter three, from verse eight to ten. One tactic of the end of the devil is sin. Sin. You know that sin takes you away from God. It takes away God's protection from you. Sin makes the devil to have your soul in his hands. When you're living in sin, the devil have, it captures your soul. And if you die in that sin, you will go to hell. He knows that. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin, 
for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. He knows that when you are living in sin, you belong to him. So he always, he doesn't, he doesn't want, he doesn't want you to see sin as sin. He painted, he sprayed, and make it look look like gold. He makes the people feel that it does not matter. And gradually, they are going into damnation. But when we know this, and we flee away from sin, then we will be able to overcome the, the, the devil in Jesus' name. That is why God, that he may destroy the works of the devil. The saintly warrior cannot afford to be ignorant of the devices of the enemies through false brethren, false vision and prophecies, false ministries and miracles, and damning some suggestions from dear ones. You know, we are ignorant that maybe you are, maybe you are expecting that, that the devil will just appear and say, yes, this, this is me. I am the devil. I have come to deceive you. No, he will not. He comes through false brethren. He comes through false vision and false prophecies, false ministries, and miracles. When you are deceived by all those things, then he has captured you. At that time, there is no way you can fight spiritual warfare. Can a kingdom fight against kingdom? You cannot fight against him at that time. You, you become weak because you've lost the power. That is why as warriors, let's not be ignorant. Let's read Nehemiah chapter 6, 10 to 14. In that place, we will see how false prophets try to deceive a man with false prophecies. If you are there, please read. Nehemiah 6, 10 to 14. Hallelujah. Afterward, I came home to you. 10 to 14. Yeah. Afterward, I came home to the house of uh, Shemi, the son of David, the son of uh, Machabee, who was shot and sad. Let us meet together in the house of God, within the temple, and let us shut the doors. They will come to slay the day, the night when they come to slay the And I said, So such a man as I flee, and who is he that being as I am, to go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceive that God has sent, has not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me for told you and Sembala had hired him. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and see that they might have my people and they will call that they might reproach me. My God, think out of all Tobia and Sembala, Sembala, according to this their words. And on the prophetess, no idea and the rest of the prophet Amen. Now you see what happens there. Tobiah and Sanballat, a holy man, a righteous man who is walking according to God's heart, who is living a holy life. Then these two people, Tobiah and Sanballat, they hired a false 
prophet, prophetess. And that one came and prophesied false prophecies. Trying to put him in fear so that he will then submit to such false prophecies and sin against God. And by the time he sinned against God, by then they will have something to hold against him. Then the first prophet came and prophesied false prophecy, trying to put him in fear so that they can capture him. But he had the spirit of designment. He was able to design. That is a wise warrior. That is a wise believer. He was able to design and said, no, this prophecy is not of God. He is not of God. He's not prophesying with the Spirit of God. He said, they just doing it to put me in fear that they might have something against me. They want me to sin against God. That is how the, 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 the first prophet, that is how they work. They make prophecies and put you in fear. Then they tell you to do things that are not scriptural. And they tell you, do this and do that. Because you are now afraid. Then at the end, you sin against God. You follow them, you sin against God, and, and they capture your soul. Just ask. This child of God that we just read, just as he was wise to design, may God give everyone of us the spirit of designment to be able to design in Jesus' name. And we will not fall victim in Jesus' name. And as a warrior, we should not love the world, the things of this world. We should not entangle ourselves with the things of this world. There's no man that and entangled himself with the affairs of this world. Because when you entangle yourself with this world, you won't even know when you will sleep and fall. Your consciousness will be taken away from you. And God will give us the grace to be wise and to be strong in Jesus' name. We see that Paul was tough. When it comes to fighting spiritual warfare, he was tough because his main aim was to keep his converts in the way of the Lord, to make sure that they all make heaven at last, to keep them in holiness and righteousness. Then suddenly, he starts seeing false, falsehood, starts seeing people coming in to, to um, deceive them, religious people, Judaism, so many other things coming in, trying to snatch them away. Then he rose up. He became tough. He was no longer meek because he knew that this is a spiritual battle now. And in this spiritual battle, you don't need softness. So he became tough in tackling it so that he might save the soul of the people. He did that in words. He did that in confrontation. And he did that in declaring the word of truth. Just like Judge Duffy captured in this way. We've heard this, this hymn before. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the Lord. Lift up his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army <laughs> I think that is army shall you lead. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. If you can remember those legs very well. Say the arm of flesh will fail you. Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor and watching unto prayer, where duty call or danger, 
be never wanting them. When the souls of people are in danger, when you see that the wolves in sheep clothing are coming to take away the souls of people, then you rise up as a soldier of Christ and declare the word of truth and confront the falsehood and retain and protect the soul of the saints of the people in the in the kingdom of god and as you do so you will end up populating the kingdom of god and depopulating the kingdom of the devil amen we can see that paul uses the spiritual weapons to fight against falsehood and also we can also use spiritual warfare to fight against anything that will stand against our prosperity we can also use it to, to draw down our accomplishments all that God has for us but we see right from the days of John the Baptist, what happened? The kingdom of God so far reached what? Violent. And the violent ones take it by force. And as we pray and as we do that, our prosperity, our healing, everything will come to us in Jesus' name. And also, we can also use spiritual warfare to bring down every disobedience. Anything that lifts himself up above the name of God. And also, we can also use it to subdue every form of disobedience that may arise in our lives. Through prayers, through declaring the, the word of God. But today, what happened? We have believers who only think that spiritual warfare is only on your knees. When you go to your knees and pray and cast a bound, it's good. But after that, you must come out and speak and declare the word. That was what Apostle Paul did. If he had just been praying, 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 he did not write an episode to respond to those critics, to respond to those falsehoods who are trying to destroy the soul of his, of his convert. Those souls would have been lost and God would have held him accountable for it. So as believers, we are soldiers. Let's protect one another in the Lord. And as we do so, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Also, we should be When our own obedience is what is complete, let us come with complete obedience to the Lord. The Lord will give us victory over the enemies in Jesus' name. Mission to Christ like action. And also, he was also tough when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to spiritual what, warfare. He was tough also. Amen. Give reasons for Paul's toughness through letters. When he was writing his letters, he was tough. Why was he tough in his letters? Okay. 
He says that the change in situation necessitates a change in disposition and approach. When he was away, he discovered that things was changing. So that things was changing. His converts were almost getting lost. Then what happened? That change in his in his in the way he approaches the issue, in his disposition and approach in his in, in his letter. Because if he was not tough, he wouldn't have been able to win that spiritual warfare. Amen. The comment on the contrast between physical and spiritual weapon in ministry. What is the difference between physical and spiritual weapon in ministry? Amen. Praise the Lord. And also, we can, from this lesson that we read, we see that the opposers, those people who were opposing and criticizing Apostle Paul's Christ like attitude because they felt he was humble and was gentle and meek, they were boasting. They were boasting with their intellectual, with their skills with their abilities, all that they have, with their background. But Paul also, he have skills. He have, when it comes to background, he have a reputable Jewish background. Also, he had everything that those people had. But those people were boasting on that physical thing. But Paul did not boast on those, on those physical things. He put them on, in suggestion to the Spirit of God. And he did what boast in the Lord. He, they, he did not even recognize all he had. He boast in the white these people they were boasting with the physical achievement, but he was what boasting what in the Lord. And he was able to overcome them. Now we see a very sick, deep secret there of how to win the spiritual battle. When your enemies, when they are rolling, but you say, I, depend, I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. That was how, how David defeated Goliath. The same principle that Paul used here to defeat those falsehood that were rising against his ministry. Amen. Why is the believer's why is the believer's obedience an indispensable condition for divine vengeance on the disobedient? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God God if God can only be on the side of righteousness. So that is why he protects the obedient believers. He cannot protect disobedient because if he does, then he himself becomes disobedient. So um, it, is a, it is a straight contrast. Uh, and the reason why you know, God vengeance is for the obedient and not for disobedient. For disobedient. Amen. Amen. That is okay. okay. That is well explained. And as we obey the Lord, He will fight for us 
in Jesus name Heavenly Father we thank you for the word that we've heard Lord I will pray as you interpret your word to us even, even after we leave here that you open our eyes oh God to more ways of oh God to fight the spiritual warfare and as we put on the whole armor of God That our soul and the soul of those that you've put under our care, O oh Lord, they will not go into damnation in Jesus' name. That false prophet, false hood, false brethren, false ministries, false gospel, diluted gospel, they will not take us away from you in Jesus' name. At the end, O oh Lord, we and the family that you've given unto us we want to make heaven that the crown that you've prepared for us that we will all wear that crown in jesus name heaven at last for every one of us and all the saints and believers all over the world in jesus name amen praise the lord I welcome every one of us to today's Sunday service and I pray that the grace of the Lord will continue to be with every one of us in Jesus. I want you to know that it is only big word for me to use that I love every one of you. And then you also you have always been a challenge. And I wish what my wife will I mean what my life will have been if I don't have you beside me. And I, sometimes I wish you see what I'm seeing. I wish you see what I'm seeing. Then recently I put so, some of the picture we took. We, we took um, as a family. I put it on the Facebook and then I put professor like a small boy. I put it beside. And <laughs> everyone we want to say, I want to be your family. So, and I say that, oh, I have a professor in my family, I have, a, I have an academician in my family, I have beautiful people in my family, I praise the name of the Lord. So I praise that Almighty God that, as everyone of you is humbling yourself, God will continue to promote you in Jesus' name. I wish you go and look at the picture. It's very, very fun. I don't know how I came across it, and I put it on Facebook. Praise the Lord. We have a lot to do today. I don't know if I'm going to take Brother Benjamin um, role this morning. I've not know, but if I take it, uh, I know you will permit me um, because we will be busy. Smile, brother. <laughs> My bro, he said yesterday I couldn't say yes because he knows my program. I was so tired, I was not sleeping, and then I still have some things to do. We have to do some things together yesterday morning, and then uh, it's like I just slept for three hours within 24 hours. But uh, what I want to say now, I pray that my office boss, they didn't listen to it. Unfortunately, I went to work and then I did some little, little thing I, to, I need to do. And I, I signaled to my partner. He said, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> around the line, I signaled to him and go and say, go ahead. So, it was until this morning that I was able to gain the little strength I have. And then my wife sent message yesterday. I wish because there's another message I need to read to us. That he sent message yesterday that they are deeply asking of us, not even Pastor Dada now. So if just appearance, we listen to one message. After all, some people go there, they do something for three hours and they come back. Some people go there, they do one thing for one hour and they come back. Not even DC, something official. We have been going for our international passport. We go to DC, we come back just one hour or thirty minutes. So if we can do that, we should be able to do that with the work of the Lord too. 
And there's something that encourage me, those politicians, when they are campaigning, they don't rest. We will not rest for God in Jesus' name. And he will continue to uphold us. So, bro, sister, wife, sister, bro, sister, brother's wife, please. Go ahead. Sorry, ma. <laughs> <laughs> so, please. Just give me to me. I, I'm, I, we are going to be very busy today. He knows. We, we are going to be very, very busy today. And God is going to help us in Jesus' name. And I want to thank every one of us, especially Brother Stephen, for the caring of the church yesterday. Almighty God is going to promote us in Jesus' name. I want to thank every one of you. I just need to be mentioned so that every one of us can be know that what we are doing. As I told us, there's a message I didn't want us to listen to. Bra Stephen message you have been the last message. But along the lines, like God was telling me, so before you are going to DC, you will not let my people be blessed. So we will listen to one question and answer on parental courses from GS. Please, everybody be ready. So that uh, that's why when Bra Stephen was praying that there's a purpose. For you to come today, I realize there's a purpose. And the God, we are going to be benefited in Jesus' name. Apart from that, do not forget the Bible study tomorrow. And I think we have night VG tomorrow. You know, when I was reading all this thing, my one energy was just coming that this is the work I've given to you. Continue doing it. And then we will do it to the end in Jesus' name. By the grace of the Lord, we will not rest. The grace of the Lord will continue to be with us. So I won't be able to announce all other things. I said there will be Bible study and prayer meeting on Thursday. I know Brother Benjamin was working, and then many of us didn't join to us. But let us continue to do it, and God is going to continue to help us in Jesus' name. Uh, Sunday service, uh, I think we know the schedule. God will help us in Jesus' name. The, I just took note of it when my wife was talking about it uh, on Sunday. All these usher children, electronic finance, anyone of us that can attend, please let. That's why we buy the car. That's why we buy the car. Please let us do all what we can do to be attending them. And the grace of the Lord will continue to help everyone of us in Jesus' name. Once again, with sincerity of mind, God in my heart, I appreciate everyone of you. It is my pray prayer that. You will continue to see what I'm saying. And the grace of the Lord will continue to be with everyone of us in Jesus' name. So, after the announcement, I will just make sure we bring our tithe and offering. Then, okay. I don't know. Let me, because this thing may be a little bit sober and some people may want to accuse me. <laughs> so, let us, after the tithe, I will read a message for Nigerian Embassy to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of the grace you have given to us. We pray by, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. We will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. And your mighty hand will continue to be upon us. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord and answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Continue to call upon the name of the Lord, and by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. As we are here this morning, God will bless you. God will bless everybody. We will not do it in vain. You know, when I was thinking about all of our program, or what we are going to do today, that strength just keep coming, turning me. We are becoming a warrior in the Bible Church of Charlotte. I pray that Almighty God will continue to raise every one of us up in Jesus' name. And all what we are contributing, as I've been only been telling us, do not look at yourself, but look at the people you are holding on the faith. Many of you, you have been holding us. You have been holding me. And this has only been joy. I, maybe the lot of things will have happened on my Christian journey. But uh just see you just seeking for your advice just keep it for one i mean prayer for one another 
I'm being boastful on this Christian journey. Continue to call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will not use to instead of you in Jesus' name. That God will continue to use you mightfully, financially, in all area of our life. That mighty and the Lord will continue to be with every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Because of our time, and then I will quickly read this message because that's a part of the work of the church to inform every one of us of what is going on. And then so that we can be advising other people. The last time we went, uh, we saw that a pastor, or I can't pronounce his name very well, told, told us about when you meet a police, don't argue with him. No matter what the case may be, just surrender. Keep your hand up. Whatever I said you should do, is that because he has the power to shoot. And then as far as he has the power to shoot, anything he will count it as say you want to fight against him. So just, no matter if he said by the time they take you to their office, whatever you want to say, then you can say it. But whenever you come across policeman, don't argue, don't say anything. Whatever I tell you to do, just do it. Then when you get to their office, ask for a lawyer. So the another information has come this morning about the immigration. I don't know how authentic is it, but whatever they say is Nigeria embassy, you need to take it very, very serious. Wait, pardon me, I'm not used to it. okay. This is how it goes. Immigra immigration advice from Nigeria Embassy in New York. Please send to all Nigerians you know in the U.S., not only, only all Nigerians now, any immigrants that we know are there, we love them. Permanent residents, please carry your green card in your wallet. It is the law. Leave a copy at home. That's for permanent resident. Print out your 194. That's from 194. And carry with your own expired passport. If your papers are about to expire, put in for an extension and carry your receipt with, you, with your passport. They have speeded up deportation of all citizens of other countries. If you are illegal or have committed mis is it mis I'm not, mis I'm not, mm -hmm. three times. They said that three times is equal to felony. Make arrangement now with people who can take her. This thing is funny. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> they said, make arrangement now with people who can take care of your kids. Stop and that can take care of your kids, store, and mortgage in case you are arrested and in prison or deported immediately. Naturalized citizen, especially black or anyone with assent, like your pastor. <laughs> Order a citizenship card that you can carry in your wallet. General advice, don't stay out late don't run a red light. Don't get involved in anything that will inform police fingerprints. More than anything, have a nest of, of king or friend or your pastor or imam that can check on you every now and then. If you have any reason to worry about your status or your past, neighbor, check on neighbors. Check on neighbors. This, like any other thing, is a is a is a pace. It will pass, but don't fail, don't fall victim, victim, and don't be a collateral damage. May the Lord see us through this season. Please send to all Nigerian, you know, in U.S. Send to all immigrants. Don't worry. <laughs> I know some of us will be saying, "We told you, we told, we told you." It is well in Jesus' name. It is well in Jesus' name. The Bible says 10,000 before, another 
thousand before that, that we will just see it. I too have been I've been reading something like that. Uh, we are in the church. I don't care. When this thing came, I was just thinking within myself, what is bad in Nigeria? To be sincere. What is bad in Nigeria? And then if this thing is going on like this, uh, the glory of this, which I don't, I don't believe, the glory of this, this country we live in. And, and this, let me be, be frankly speaking. Did you know what other countries do? Let us be sincere. What Iran did? They are least. When you want to consider them, what did they do? They said, if this country said nobody should come from their country to their country, nobody should come from their own country to their own country too. That's what Iran did. You know, I'm, I'm not supporting, you get what I'm saying? But I don't want everybody to be fair. I don't want to include, I we are secure, whoever is. I, I was just, when I read it, I was just telling myself, what happened to Nigeria? They were the same they said, why should I be begging to live in a country? They were the same they said, okay, this is the area we see that we can help. Come, we are ready to help you. If we are not ready to help again, I'm ready to go back to my country. Isn't that not a big deal? Then nobody sent me out of my country. I don't, no, you get what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, I'm, 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 and then I, I look at it. They say, what is the factor of production? I only look at it that Nigeria is bad. Everything is bad. They're, they're, but every country, they always say Nigeria is going to be great. They, I, I, I was now reading something. That, that thing told me, wherever they have a populous, I mean, a high population, they, their production always be high. So that's why the GPA in this country is high. We have, there are more than 300 million people. So everybody comes, they are producing. Then the production, production is becoming, if you send everybody out, the production will low. Just somebody, they, they send, I'm just want to tell you, nobody should be fair, including the people who are going to be listening to us. There's a person here, he was, he was, I think he came for a scholarship or something like that. Then they said his wife should not come. He said, okay, if my wife is not coming, I too am going. That's me. You may be thinking, I, 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 I'm saying, go and look at many faces. You see some Asians, some, uh, another country that they are minister or they are working in the high level. If you send their children, or you send their children should not come, you will be surprised. Many of them will go. That although you are not saying I should go, but because you are using me, but because my this person is not coming, I will go too. I pray that all this thing is just a formula. But I'm, I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with my country. There's nothing wrong with my country. Uh, there's nothing wrong with my boss. No, no country like home. If, they, if we want to appreciate that what God has done in this country, we are going to appreciate. But if they want to show us that this country is greater than God, <laughs> it's not going to be possible. Uh, I don't support uh, this orderliness. Please listen to me. But I don't want anybody to be faithful. We are not thieves. We are law abiding. We do everything. We, we are, since almost three days now, I've not slept. Is a part of the production in this country. Including many of us. I saw my brother now. That's why this was He went and drink coffee. Let's say Nigeria he will be sleeping. <laughs> it's a part of the production to the where he's working. Using his brain. Some of the work many, many of us are doing, we know. That's, go, why? Whereby you are working in the night, 80% is an the immigrant. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. If 80, you are working in the night, and at that place you are working, 80% are immigrants. 
There's something wrong. So if you say that you are going to be arresting every one of us, then let us see. Let us see. So I just I'm saying I'm not supporting this other name. I don't support not somebody, but I don't want every one of us to be loved. If there's anybody that's going to be blamed, I voted. And I know where I've, I voted. <laughs> but that shouldn't be. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? I I I voted. I voted. So I don't want everybody to be afraid. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I've been reading a lot, and then many accusing me that ah, uh, uh, see you voted. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, last somebody just went and do the the citizenship. I mean, the check on ah. Uh, to go and report, and then immediately you got there. Mm. But the grace of the Lord is, is sufficient. God has reason for everything, and then Almighty God will keep us in Jesus' name. So, wife, be not afraid of losing your husband. Husband, be not afraid of. I am not afraid of losing my family. <laughs> And then uh, we, every one of us, do not afraid of that you are going to leave or you are going to go to Nigeria or you are going to go to Egypt or wherever we come from. God that brought us will keep us. And then I don't want to even to be, it's like a prayer of a, a fearful person. You get what I'm saying? My own, the will of the Lord will come to pass. And then I don't afraid. I, it is not, I'm, I'm, I, things are getting better. I'm better off when I was in Nigeria. I'm better off when I was in Nigeria. So, God will keep us in Jesus' name. So, but let us do what is right. Let us keep what is right. Let us be lawful. Let us obey the commandment of the, I mean, the law of the country and the, all other things. Leave it to the hand of the Lord. God will keep us in Jesus' name. I don't know. Maybe we should just, okay, what's our time? We go to Bible reading, John chapter 11. We know do the place of worship. Hmm? Announcement. That, let's take that one for announcements. No more. Or do we have anything special? There will be workout meeting on Saturday. Please, let everybody know. Let's bring all our mind, all everything. I pray that God will create time for Brother Benjamin in Jesus' name. Part of what we think that on that workout meeting, you are going to be giving us 30 30 minute message on how to be a leader in the community and in the church. But God is going to help us in Jesus' name. And so, uh, how to be an effective leader. So let's read the Bible, Bible reading, chapter 11. John, chapter 11. A certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then, after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, 
Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way, and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come, and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly, and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house, and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit, and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. 
And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, What think ye, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priest and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. May God bless his word in our heart in Jesus' name. We shall quickly listen to choir song before the pastor message.
We are going to have uh, time for questions now. So if we have any question from the student section, we ask that you raise up your hand. The hand over there. Good morning, sir. So I read from Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. He said, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Sir, this morning I learned from uh, teaching that if someone is born again, he enters a healing covenant with God. Sir, I want to ask this question. Is it possible that when someone is born again, before maybe that person is born again, the parents are idol worshippers, and somehow he was en- a covenant was entered on his behalf before the person grew up. So if such a person grows up and he becomes a born again Christian, can this covenant still, the covenant entered on his behalf, can it still work on him? Because I, I stayed with, I'm staying with uh, some brethren, and then uh, we were talking about healing. So as we were talking about healing, they said if someone is born again, and he is in such a covenant, such a person still needs to be prayed for so that such covenant can be broken even someone is born again. And I argued with them. But sir, I want to ask, is it true? Only be remove be re Latino Exodo Riketa Le Logon Esa e Karo Din Logon e Tio Kaba e Kwe E Nyo Si Ma Son Luwa Loron Yin Ongo Si Busi Yon Nge E Re A Tio Me Re E Nyo Si Mo Aron Kro La Anre E Re Ongo Ambe E Re Kwe Ni Nyo E Koti Aro Yi Ongo Wa Wikwe Ti E Nyo Ba Ti Di E Ni Igbala O Ti Wano Ma Je Mo Yi Mo La Rada Pe Luwa Loron Ongo Ambe E Re Kwe Ti E Nyo Ba Ti Di E Ni Igbala O Ti Wano Ma Je Mo Yi Mo La Rada Pe Luwa Loron Ongo Ambe E Re Kwe Ti E Nyo Ba Ti Di E ti awon obi eniyan ti won si je alai gbagbo e boya won ti wonu imule kan pelu satani nitori eniyan tabi won ti fi eniyan to re fun satani tabi won ti ni eje kan lori aye eniyan saju igbala re ti eniyan ba wa de ni igbala eje ti awon obi re ti ba esu je tabi ton ma je ton ba esu da nitori re yen se yo si ma ye eniyan won lo nto fun sokun fa re ni pe awon n gbe lodo awon ara kan awon wa nsoro ni pa agbara olorun lati pa wa mo ni ilera awon yen wa so wi pe bi eniyan ba wa nu oru majemu be tabi ti won ti ba esu mule nitori aye eniyan tele iru eniyan ni lo pe ki won gbadura fun ki majemu yen mo ba se ninu aye re mo wa be re pe nitori pa won jiyan jo e se otito ni iru oro be le se be in exodus chapter 25 ninu exodus ori karun de ni ogun or other chapter 23 ori keta le logun and he shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee and you see ma se oluwa olorun yin owo si bu si o nje re ati o me re emi o si mu arun kuro laarin re and there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in the land the number of thy days i will fulfill o berin kan ki yo se no be ni ki yo yagan ni ile re iyojo re le mi okun obviously the lord had a covenant with the children of israel daju daju olorun ni majemu pelu awon omo israel and we need to understand that as a result of that covenant a lot of blessings came upon them o ye ko wa yi wa pe nitori majemu yi opolopo ibo fun mi ran lo wa sinu aye won and as long as they remain in obedience serving the lord the blessings of the covenant will be theirs ni won gba ti won ba si tesi waju lati ma gboran si olorun lenu awon ibo ko yen o ma wa sinu aye won you see the condition there you will serve the lord your god o ti ramu ye ke wa nbi oni pe yen o ma se oluwa olorun yin in first chronicles chapter 29 ninu chronicles kin ni ori kokan din ni ogbon first chronicles chapter 29 chronicles kin ni ori kokan din ni ogbon in verse uh, 19 yes e kokan din ni ogun 
and give unto Solomon my son a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy statutes, thy testimonies, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for which I have made provision. David was an Israelite. David is your Israeli. He had a son, Solomon. On your mother, Solomon. And now he was praying for Solomon. Nobody you want that rap for Solomon. That something will happen. Then talk to you, Sally. So that the blessings of the Lord will continue with Solomon, and Solomon will be useful to the Lord. Keep up for Lord. Go let us watch him. I hear Solomon. Keep Solomon. You let us look for Lord. And this is the request he made. Let us hear about you, Ben. Give him a perfect heart. For your country, Ben. Let him keep. Your commandments. Let him observe your ways, your testimonies. And that you will do all these things that are supposed to be done. All that is summed up in serving the Lord. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. And now Solomon, my son, know the God of thy father and serve him. With a perfect heart. And with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Be what back up a rere, worry so bad. Be what back or sile, or what town no city lie. Now, from the statement of David to his son, you know, or David is your marriage. This tells us very clearly that the covenant is not automatic. We must observe the conditions of the covenant. O P. Wagbang Bape, I want for a new no magem, no, he is a quick buffet, last time I want more your tongue, but what you are not in Moses. And so it says. Obey the Lord, observe His way with a perfect heart and a willing mind. Only balance your lua leno, renew on a re, but look up if If you seek Him, He'll be found of you. He will pass up a re, worry. If you forsake Him, to go back on. If you forsake the ways of the Lord, to go back on, no lua sile. Then He will cast you off. Then David said, forever. Only a war town. David is to have a cope, city lie line. We come back then to Exodus. Chapter 23. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. You cannot serve the Lord until you have given your life to the Lord. Because the people that were not born again, that were living in sin, and they came to serve and to worship the Lord. He said, When you come to appear before me, who has required this? Of your hand. He said, When you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Then he counseled and commanded them. Wash make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Come now let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be like crimson, they will be like wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. So you can see that when we talk of serving the Lord, He requires that you repent, that you are born again, that you are living a life according to the Word of God. And then as you are living in that Word of God, it says, He shall bless thy bread. Now we know that there were children children of Israel that became sick. Even when Moses was still alive, in the case of Miriam, 
leprosy came upon her. That means that even after we are born again, we keep on in obedience to the Lord, serving the Lord, to be able to enjoy the benefits of the covenant. We know that Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, we know that they rebelled, and sudden death, judgment came upon them. They were Israelites. The covenant was for all of them. But you see, they did not fulfill the uh, condition of the covenant. And then there were times when the children of Israel began to grumble. And a plague struck the whole camp. And they began to die. And Moses said, Up, oh, Aaron, take your censer, make a sacrifice. Stand between the living and the dead. You see, when the children of Israel did not stay in the covenant, there were a lot of things coming upon them. And all through the Old Testament, you'll find that, that a lot of evil things came upon the individuals that did not live according to the word of God. Now, our young brother wants to have understanding on an important matter. What's the relationship between what the parents have done and what the children have not done in relation to keeping them healthy and keeping them sound? Our young brother said other people were discussing and he argued with them and said, No, it cannot be like that. No, it must be like this. Now, as we talk about children and we talk about parents, First of all, let me tell you about the natural part of it. Then there is the spiritual aspect of the question. Do you remember when David committed sin with Bathsheba? Do you remember that the woman became pregnant and delivered a baby? And David loved that child very much. David is and that child had not committed any sin. He was just the product of the relationship between David and Bathsheba. David had done 